We picked Assassin's Creed Unity uh, because we find it really interesting that there's this relationship between a city we can visit now and a historic city and, and the, the differences between them. We were interested in how Unity opens up the city in a new way to players. Rather than just experiencing things from the street, being able to really kind of navigate across the buildings, the rooftops, the facade, interacting with architecture in a different way. Video Game Urbanism is the name of our teaching studio, which is currently based at the Bartlett School of Architecture. We've been teaching this for a number of years now, working with students to promote the use of uh, game engine technology as an architectural method for design. Ubisoft approached us to reinterpret one of their games in any way we'd like to, so we responded thinking that as architects it would be really fun to try and make an architectural model, a maquette of a dynamic video game space and to explore what possibilities that might offer us. As architects we're trained to see buildings in, in a particular way, but a game like Assassin's Creed Unity lets us break that and, and, and see the city in, in a new light. And we're standing here today in the Bourse de Commerce, which is obviously the highlight of the model here. The model is uh, essentially a journey. Um, what we did was to sample different areas of the city and we kind of decided to compress this together. It's a model that's through time and space, I suppose, and, and what we wanted to express through that is that the player is going to uh, experience many different areas that have different architectural characteristics, and this is going to shape the way that they move through the city, but there's also a kind of consistency to the way that the player uh, disrupts the, the architecture of the city. The different colour codes represent different forms of movement. So we have from running to jumping to climbing and really just expressing the, the different kind of choreography that, that Arno takes across the rooftops and, and what relationship he has with the buildings themselves and being able to kind of navigate through them in this way. So we go from the riverside through to the old kind of medieval areas of the city where the buildings are much smaller and irregular, through to the larger kind of boulevards and all the way up to the Bourse de Commerce at the end. We picked the Allo Blay because we think it was a really good example of a building that's use has changed maybe quite a lot from the game uh, to the present day, even to the fact that it's got a, a new insertion in it from an architect that we really love, Tadao Ando. And I think for us, it was a really interesting building to look at because of this reason, where we can find from the outside that there are a lot of historical connections that we can see in the game, yet the building itself has changed quite a lot in, in its interior form from the way that the player experiences it. So the process we took to actually construct this model was first and foremost playing the game ourselves, mapping out a route that we would take through the game, through these different districts. We then stitched together this gameplay footage that we took ourselves. A lot of it involved kind of standing in different parts of the city, taking screenshots, going up close to the buildings, and then really transcribing that detail into a digital model. When we were researching the game, we found it really interesting to read some of the interviews and some of the material from the developers as to how they approached the design of the architecture, from things like copyright of certain elements to the different ways that procedural techniques were used to generate this kind of differentiation within the typologies. So learning about that and hearing that, you know, you're facing kind of interesting sort of real virtual problems you know, we also face as architects sometimes was a really interesting insight. So we think that there's a, an important relationship between architecture, urbanism and video games. Firstly, the architecture and urbanism let us understand uh, the forces that maybe shaped these fictional cities, how they came to be, what the players status or role in the world is. And an understanding of how real cities are formed is, is often very, very helpful in being able to articulate that meaningfully in a fictional world as well. A knowledge from our field can also contribute to the ways that we understand how cities, civilizations, cultures and languages might have been formed in the past to inform any visions of the future that we might establish in game worlds. Um, today or set in different time periods as well. We also feel that 
games have the ability to reach people and to uh, engage them in ways that architects can also learn from because we work in a discipline that has certain legal boundaries and certain gaps between the people that make buildings and the people that use buildings and, and we've all, always tried to express in our work that we could use games and virtual spaces as a way of breaking down those boundaries and inviting new audiences to participate in architectural design. In that sense we really like the way that games are totally kind of user-centric spaces, which is definitely something architecture can learn from. We've been gamers since we were young. Uh, I think it's something that we grew up playing video games and being transported to these you know, amazing worlds. And I think that really informed, uh, in some way, our decision to become architects because we've always been really interested by spaces and the, the things that people do in spaces and, and their relationship to, to people and, and their lives. And I think games were something that from a, a young age allowed us to kind of explore those conditions. I think through our books, Video Game Atlas, Mapping Interactive Worlds, we became different kind of players. So the games that we were very used to playing, we play them in very different ways. So breaking worlds, venturing to their edges, um, and it's exposed us to uh, different perspectives from the games that we were kind of quite used to, um, and yeah, interpreting them in quite unusual ways.